Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. This is video number four in the BMAT series. In my previous videos, I gave an overview about the BMAT and we started looking into section one of the BMAT. In my last video, we talked about the critical thinking style questions in section one. In this video, we'll be talking about the other style of questions that you'll get in section one, which are the problem solving questions. If you're new to this channel, my name's Brian. I'm a newly qualified doctor in London. I've studied medicine at the University of Cambridge and at Imperial College London. I'm also the founder and president of Into Med School, we're an organisation that provides free support and mentorship for anyone thinking about applying to study medicine at university. Okay, so firstly, what are the problem solving questions in section one? These make up 50% of the questions in section one. They're fairly unpredictable, but generally what they rely on is a really basic understanding of GCSE level maths. In my previous video, I spoke about the critical thinking style questions in which you'll get a passage of texts and you'll have to understand an argument. In the problem solving questions in section one of the BMAT, the STEM can vary quite a lot. You might get a large body of text or data, you could get a table, you could even get a series of instructions or even get an image. For this reason, people generally find that the problem solving questions in section one actually take slightly longer than the critical thinking style questions. The critical thinking style questions, which I went through in my last video, typically take about 30 to 40 seconds generally for people to answer. Whereas for the these questions, actually they can often take up to a minute. Broadly, you will get questions that can be split up into four different types. You've got the repeating patterns questions, you've got the spatial reasoning questions, you might get tables and graphs, and finally you've got the logic questions. All four of these questions will require to use some level of mental maths. It's important to note that the level of the maths that's going to be required in section one is going to be nowhere near the level that they require for you to use in section number two. However, you're still likely to have to use some sort of basic maths like adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing. In my last video, I spoke about how important it is to practice these questions. I'll include a link to the past papers as well as official practice papers in the description below. Having spoken to other people that have scored really highly, some of the top scores in the country, we all agree that this is the main thing that determines if you're going to do really well in the exam. Practicing the questions and actually redoing them again and again until you get them all correct. As well as that, we also have some other top tips for doing well in these sort of questions within section one of the BMAP. One tip for the problem solving questions is similar to the critical thinking questions, read through the stem of the question as quickly as you can. Don't get bogged down by specific details, wondering if things are true or not. It's really important to just sift through everything rather than worrying about all the specific details. The next top tip is practice writing and drawing diagrams on your exam paper. Get used to circling and underlying key information within the stem of the question. Even draw out diagrams or write out calculations if you really need to. Okay, and then the next top tip, this is something you will realize when you start doing the practice papers and the past papers. A lot of the questions actually require trial and error. What that means is you might start answering questions and then find out that you've started going down the wrong direction with your thinking. It's important to be able to recognize this and then go back so you can go down a different pathway of thinking. By doing past papers, you'll be able to recognize when you'll need to change your strategy so you don't get bogged down with continuing down the path of thinking just because that's how you started it when you started answering the question. All right, and now the next top tip for the problem solving questions in section one. The units are crucial. As I've said previously, these questions are multiple choice and a lot of the answers are gonna be very similar. You might even find that of the possible answers, the correct answer is only differentiated from some of the incorrect answers by the units. You don't want to do all the calculations and the workings out just to get the answer wrong because you've included the wrong units or you've lost track of the units. It's a very common mistake to make, for example, writing seconds instead of minutes. So when you're doing the practice papers, make sure you're keeping track of the units as you go through and do your calculations. 
This way, you'll be confident that you've used the right units when you give your answer. Okay, and now my next top tip is sort of along the same lines. Do the workings out step by step. Some of the questions will ask you to solve the question by carrying out a series of steps. As you're not using a calculator, it's very tempting to skip some steps or to combine steps. Focus on doing the steps sequentially rather than being overwhelmed with how many steps you're doing and combining them together. I found that this is often where people get stuck and then start going down the wrong route. Okay, and now the next one is to do with timing. Simplify the questions. You'll find that a lot of the stems of questions are very complicated because they've got complex backgrounds and the scenario will have characters with complicated or long names. The names and the scenarios are often very irrelevant to the question and aren't going to help you get to the right answer. When you're doing your calculations, assign the things and the people with just one letter abbreviations and try to simplify the story to the most basic components for answering the question. All right, and now my next top tip, utilize diagrams and notes. A lot of the questions are really easy to answer, but just written in a really complicated manner. The reason they're doing that is actually just to try to confuse you. So when you're going through the questions and answering them, use diagrams and write down the important variables that you need to calculate the correct answer. That way you'll know what information you're working with and what information is actually irrelevant to answering the question. All right, and now my next top tip, I've already alluded to it in this video um, as well as in my previous videos. When you're going through and reading the possible answers, eliminate the incorrect answers as quickly as you can. The reason is you might find that on some questions, you don't actually have all the information you need to correctly identify what the correct answer is. The secret to finding the answers for these sort of questions is actually eliminating out all the ones that are definitely incorrect until there's one answer left that you can't rule out and therefore that has to be the correct answer. This is a really cheeky style of questioning and can trip up a lot of people. These sort of questions are where people can sometimes get really stuck in the exam. What you do with these questions is actually rule out all the incorrect ones until you've got one left that you can't rule out. That one has to be the correct answer. And then my next top tip sort of builds on for this. Keep one eye on the time. A lot of people find when they're doing the BMAT that they actually run out of time because they spent way too long on the earlier part of the section, getting too bogged down with the specifics for one or two questions. There's nothing worse than this because then they find out at the end that they don't have the time to answer a few of the questions in that section. And these questions might be ones that they would be able to answer very, very quickly if they had the time. You don't want this to happen to you. So what I would suggest is Keep an eye on the time. Make sure once you are answering the questions, you don't spend too long. Perhaps once you've hit the two minute mark, look at the possible answers, look at the ones you've ruled out and what's left and make an educated guess on those. As I said, all questions are worth one mark and there's no negative marking. So make sure you do put an answer down. My next top tip is when you practice, do it under exam conditions you'll find that not all the questions will take you the same time to answer them. As I said previously, people find that the critical thinking style questions are generally quicker to answer than the problem solving ones, just because the problem solving ones require more maths, but it varies from person to person. What you want to do is be able to get a feel of how long the whole exam will take you and how each individual section will go in the real thing. Practicing under exam conditions will help you get a good understanding of what's the quickest amount of time that you can get an answer to a question, but also, and maybe more importantly, it'll give you an idea of what the longest amount of time you should spend on the question is. But more than anything, I've said it already, and this is the most important thing to do in the world. Practice, practice, practice. For the BMAT, you have the luxury of having official practice questions and all of the past papers available to you online. This means that you can go into the exam having a good idea of how well you're going to do. The same format of questions come up again and again, just with slightly different wording. The more questions you'll do, the more likely you'll get a feel of the style of questions. 
you'll be able to find the past papers and the official practice papers in a link in the description below this video. Okay, so those are the top tips for doing well in the problem solving questions in section one of the BMAT. My next video in the BMAT series will be looking into section two of the BMAT. If these videos interest you, and if you want to stay up to date with the new releases, then please subscribe. If you've got any questions or any comments, then please put them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Finally, thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. It means a lot to me. I hope to see you again next time.